The ugly racial, political and economic debates happening in South Africa. I can tell you as a young person that there is a new generation of South Africans, especially South Africans of color, who are proud and have no interest or tolerance for the things that their parents let slide as we entered the democratic dispensation. In essence, this, mean that, this means that as we define and redefine our identities and as we define the new South Africa that we want our identities to manifest in, we have created no room for capitalists without a conscience, no room for racists, patriarchs, misogynists, homophobes, ageists, or ableists. The inappropriately labeled born frees are saying that we will employ an intersectional feminism that squarely confronts the systems of oppression that neither the TRC nor the current South African constitution has been able to sufficiently address. Well, let's say a very good morning to Lovelyn Noadei in our uh, Cape Town studio. It is so good to have you on the program and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. Morning to you too. A very, very powerful speech that you gave there. And I mean, in your speech, you said you were the, the first black female and the youngest person to address such a, um, a convocation. Does it mean that Stellenbosch University is positively opening up to the winds of change? Um, I think it would be slightly arrogant to say that because a young black woman did address the convocation that it means we are opening up. I don't think that's the only indicator. Um, but I think apart from that, the university is making an effort to become a lot more transformed, to open up. Um, but it takes time. I think in 2016, we shouldn't still have labels like first woman or first black or first young person. Those shouldn't feature in a 2016 um, dialogue. Yeah. Well, let's go back to, uh, I suppose, your invitation to address this uh, convocation. How, how did this all happen? Um, well, I mean, the, the convocation of Stellenbosch University has an executive committee. And I think essentially every year the executive committee um, decides who they want to invite. Um, and I'm assuming that goes really with the spirit of what that executive committee wants to achieve and communicate um, to the rest of the alumni body and the university. Mm. Um, so I think that's how it came along. So I was invited last year in April um, to come and speak at the university's convocation. And I was definitely quite honored to have been given that opportunity um, to come and address the, the alumni of our institution. I don't think it's something that is afforded to anybody. So it, it was yeah. really really humbling to receive that invitation. It certainly, it certainly is. Well, let's, let's try and get into the, uh, the meat of your talk now and what you were, what you were talking about. Uh, you focused on the inequality and what you refer to as the faulty economic policies the country has taken. What do you fault about these economic policies as, as a young person? I mean, I think really the difficulty is just that before 1994, the system that we had did facilitate a lot of structural inequalities across the board. So it just meant in terms of access to education that some people got better access than others. Um, in terms of business opportunities, in terms of job and things like that, um, access to those different opportunities was limited on the basis of policies actively perpetrated or put forward by the state. And I think that in, in 2016, we're still in a position where even though the, the government has said, you know, we've got BEE, we have a lot of policies essentially that are aimed at addressing these structural inequalities, we haven't really seen it changing because I think the system in itself is still geared to a very, very unconscionable capitalism. I think it means that um, essentially today, black South Africans still don't have um, adequate access to education, adequate access to basic amenities, adequate access to proper jobs. Um, and I think that those are things that require a bit more of an aggressive, um, aggressive approach in order to deal with them. Yeah. In, in, in your talk, you also quoted uh, Kayad Langa um, saying the problem is the victims of apartheid actually started to forgive the, um, the, the, the oppressors before any apology was actually given. Uh, and the greatest tragedy that we faced with is a failure to acknowledge any wrongdoing. Having said that, where does healing even begin when something like this happens? Mm -hmm. I think it's difficult to have healing when we haven't had, you know, a catharsis moment, when we haven't looked the devil in the eye and, and called him out for what he is essentially. And, and, and by saying that, obviously I'm not saying white people are devils. What I'm saying is that I think it was an abnormal 
um, transition process. I think anybody that has gone through a significant trauma in their lives doesn't just overnight forgive and move on. There's a process, there's anger, there's denial, there's grief, there's depression. We have to go through all those things. And I think as a country, we didn't let ourselves go through that. Um, and the result is that 22 years later, we're still talking about um, racism, we're still talking about sexism, we're still talking about all those things because we never really had an open conversation as a country to say what was the actual effect on these of these things on the psychology of the individual on a daily basis in South Africa. I think we approached it on a macro level and then we used policies and we used the TRC and we used this and that to brush over it. But I don't think that we, we gave ourselves opportunity to one-on-one, -on -one, black and white, sit down and say, this is what my daily interactions with you need to look like going forward in order for me to feel safe and accepted in South Africa. And I don't think we had that conversation mm. um, as individuals. And that's why we're still, we're still facing the things we're facing now. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us here on the program. Um, about you. this uh, this talk and some of the views that uh, Lovelin Nwadei uh, delivered at the uh, Academia and Alumni on Change. And it was uh, quite a moving speech. But just to tell you what uh, uh, the, the, um, Lovelin since then has done. I mean, she's managed to obtain her degree cum laude and has now moved into the financial services industry and is working exceptionally well. So congratulations to her. All right. We're gonna